Hello and welcome to this uh, episode of the VizDev Art School. Uh, my name is Ryan Meinerding. I'm the head of visual development at Marvel Studios. I sort of spend my days drawing and painting uh, the Marvel um, characters in, for the MCU. This series of instructional videos, we're going to start just talking about how to do some drawing and painting, how to draw the characters, um, and give you, give you guys a chance to sort of draw along with us as well as hopefully at the end of it giving you something that you could print out and, and color in if, if, if you'd want to. Drawing and painting is one of those great joys of my life and it, it's, it's one of those things that, that hopefully you guys can be inspired to do. And so let's get, let's get drawing. All right, let's get started drawing and talking about drawing these characters. So what type of character are you trying to draw? Um, usually breaks down very simply for comics into heroes or villains. Um, and then once you've answered that question, what type of hero are they or what type of villain are they? There's lots of different types of heroes. Um, if you think of the difference between the Hulk and Captain America and Iron Man, are they strong, are they fast, are they intelligent? What type of villain are they? Um, you know, there are lots of different types of villains as well. And one of the things with superheroes is you have that great idea of, like, what are, the, what are their powers? And you combine all of those things together into pose, posture, expression, and design. And let's, you know, all, each one of those categories could really take an entire, you know, course of, of, of discussion to talk about. But let's start with poses, with heroes. Um, most poses that we try to work out um, have a lot of inherently heroic characteristics we're trying to make chests feel strong and shoulders feel strong and and have the gesture of the pose really make the character feel powerful um whether that's a running pose a standing pose or a flying pose or a jumping pose um but but most of the time we're we are trying to find strength is is sort of an inherent part of being a superhero and and we're usually trying to find ways of of making each each character's unique unique strengths uh, visible in their poses. Um, when I do Captain America poses, I'm usually trying to find ways of making him feel heroic and noble as well. A lot of times that translates into, you know, looking off into the distance. Um, sometimes it's, sometimes it is about a very specific type of expression, which we can talk about expressions in a little bit. Um, when it's Iron Man, um, he has great flying poses, but he also is a, is a very strong fighter um, and has the chest RT. So anytime you can emphasize those, those types of unique, you know, uh, individualistic characteristics of, of each character, that'd be, that's one of the important points. Um, another one is if they're going to fly, how are they going to fly? You know, uh, Iron Man needs his repulsors in order to fly. So how does a character with repulsors fly differently than a character like Captain Marvel, who doesn't? Um, or Doctor Strange, who requires the, the, the cloak of levitation. But the main point about this is to define poses as, as sort of different than postures. Postures are essentially, it's very simple. A, a pose is, is, a, is, 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 a, is, a, is, a, is basically, a, a pose is something that any character can achieve. You know, they can... They can they can throw a punch. They can run. Um, a posture is essentially what is what is the, the 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 basic gesture of the character that's baked into that character. So the Hulk here, for example, on the left, has more of a hunched over posture, and, and something that would be more like Captain Marvel on the right um, has more of a, a sort of like a, a you know a strong gesture of, of um, a proud gesture of sticking her her, her shoulders back. Um, there's lots more we could say about poses and postures, but moving on to expressions just so they can get cover all these, uh, um, you know, fairly quickly. Expre I, sort of just drawing a base face here. Um, and in order to put expressions on top of, usually this is the way that I'll test out different expressions on characters. If we're doing a unique character design like, like Thanos or the Hulk, we'll do a neutral face and then we'll do expressions on top. And I'm just doing a sort of generic... Uh, male face and then a, a generic female face. Um, a lot of the a lot of the structure of, of these types of drawings can come from you know you can look at any number of sources in the comics as reference. Um, there's also great instructional books from Andrew Loomis um, that that talk about different structures of the face. Um, um, Bridgman is another great artist that that did great instructional books on 
on figure drawing and, and, um, you know, but generally speaking, you know, it's about trying to find, um, find a personality or character within, within each face that you draw and, and make it look like that character's looking back at you. Uh, once I have these, these heads more or less to a place where they're reasonable, I'll start doing expressions. So the, the first one I'm going to do for is, was more of an anger expression, dropping the brows a little bit, just making the eyes squint a little bit and, and turning the mouth, uh, downward. So it, it has more of a, a scowl to it, um, or easy ways to get, you know, expressions to read, um, smiles, turning the mouth upward, which is maybe an obvious one, but the, the notion of adding smile lines as well as, um, making the eyes a little bit squinty, basically people smile with their eyes a lot. They also relax their eyebrows sometimes and get more of a ball of a cheek on their face. And now into surprise, um, eyebrows go up, the eyes get wider. So you essentially have, um, you can see more of the whole circle of the iris and, and some white of the eye above the iris and into sadness, which is r raising the brows in the center and then having that sort of upturned line coming off of the top of the eye as well. And usually the mouth is a, is a downturned one and then getting into, since we're doing superheroes, the notion of, you know, extreme, extreme focus, rage, you know, anger, fighting, um, more of an extreme, extreme expression, having the mouth be open and revealing the teeth and seeing, you know, you know black on either side of the teeth, really squinting the eyes, dropping the, the, the brows quite a bit. But usually, you know, that, that all that is part, you know, f is filtered through looking at these different expressions, um, what's the pose your, your character is doing and, and what are they supposed to be thinking and how can you make that thought evident in basically their, their posture, pose, and expression. The final category that we're talking about, and again, each one of these could really, you could take a whole course on each one of these elements. Um, design is design is where that can, can apply almost to anything. In, in this case, what I'm talking about is essentially the the core structure of a design of, of a face and then Captain America's helmet, which is what we're going to do when we actually get into drawing a, um, a posed figure. Um, doing a, a base circle and then and dropping sort of a, a rectangle down for the jaw and, and then drawing a center line is an important part of drawing a face because knowing, you know, which side, to, how far apart the, the eyes are, being able to judge the whole face together. Um, Throwing the helmet on top, I'm also looking for lines that always point back to the eyes. And the, the, the ridges on his helmet, as well as the A, both point to his eyes, which are very useful design tools. Uh, but we're usually trying to find, you know, as, as strong a jawline and, and sort of um, very useful. Um, I think the word strong and strength has come up a couple times when I've been talking about this. And it's... it's, it's since they are superheroes, we're trying to find those types of um, strong qualities in, in the jawline and, and in the head shape. So I'm going to start drawing a a um, actual posed character now. This is going to be a drawing of Captain America. Uh, usually starting with that, that circle uh, again and then dropping down the rectangle and chiseling it into a, a triangle for the jaw, finding the center line, and then drawing the, the, the brows and the mouth on top of it. Um, the, the triangle that comes down from the cheekbones down to the mouth is an important set of lines as well because it really defines that front plane as strongly as possible. We're, you know, when you're getting into drawing uh, characters and faces like this, trying to find the most simple, um, not only two-dimensional read for, for characters, but also the three-dimensional read of that, that um, triangle of the, of the cheekbones that come, come down to the mouth is, is an important and useful tool. So after having had a you know, basic understanding of the, the, the Captain America helmet from the front view, I'm now trying to recreate it in a, in a three-quarter. And drawing the head first is an important tool for me, especially with Cap's head, because he's a unique character. Not, not a totally unique character, but you, know, you have a character like Spider-Man whose face is, is, is entirely covered with a mask. Um, Cap's head is, you know, you, you see his eyes and you see his mouth and nose, but then you have to also design the helmet over top of it or draw the helmet over top of it. And I, I, I usually have to draw as strong a, you know, a head as I can on, on his actual, 
you know, for his face. And then I draw the helmet on top because I, if I try to just draw them at the same time, it never seems to work. Um, getting in there and detailing out some of the, you know, the, the, the iris and the pupil and the eyelashes, a lot of that stuff really does help in, in help in defining the character and, and, and making them feel a little bit alive. Uh, reinforcing the, the jawline. Um, the, the chin strap on Captain America is one of the most helpful design elements for his face because it really does give him a really strong jawline um, from, from all angles, actually overemphasizes his jawline. And now I'm getting down into the, the body, you know, trying to figure out how to make his shoulders feel broad, uh, this, thinking about design as well as the, the straps on his shoulders point back to his head, which is always a great, you know, thing. Thinking of the rib cage as a, as a big egg and sort of building all the lines, design lines off of that. Um, and also with superheroes, that the, the sort of V that comes up off of the stripes and into the, his uh, chest and pec shape and goes out to his shoulders is it's one of those things that's just inherent in almost every superhero, you know, trying to find a way to make their, their chest feel strong and their shoulders feel strong. Um, and then all of these little details on top are, are basically trying to make him feel as real as possible. You know, thinking of Cap as a soldier, having sort of um, gear and, and pouches on his belt to be able to go into going to battle with and doing his his iconic shield um maybe I'll, I'll do a specific um art school class about about drawing his shield because it can get it seems like it should be easy but it's it's not as easy it seems some, as it seems sometimes um drawing the legs and finding folds that, that make it feel like he has weight on his legs um angling the shield a little bit more um to to really echo the gesture of his of his arm and you know, finishing off the the sketch version of his um of his arm, and I'm trying to add a little bit of smoke in the background to just heighten the the notion of uh, what this image is. Him sort of maybe hearing a call to action and turning to see what's what's happening in a in a dramatic situation. And now, since I've, I've essentially dropped the opacity on that um on that sketch, and I'm I'm drawing over top of it to find cleaner lines. So it's basically the idea of, of creating a, um, an underlay drawing that then you can go and put nicer lines on top of because you don't have to specifically worry about the placement of everything. It's, it's sort of figured out for you. Um, that, that's one of the ways that I do work a lot is, is figuring out, you know, um, using rough sketches to, to figure out the, the poses and, and what's happening the pose and the posture and expression and the design, and then going back over it with sort of cleaner lines, or in some cases, you know, a full-on Photoshop painting um, in, order to, in order to really make the, the image feel like it's real. Um, but a lot of this is f finding the, 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 the more specific and unique design elements of, of Cap, which is a lot of things on his costume are, uh, you know, um, tied into the star shape, even the design of his stripes have become sort of nestled into the, the star shape. Um, and, and most of those lines that, you know, really emphasizing the, the, the V, the strong V quality and, and <clears throat> in his body to try and make him feel strong. I always enjoyed putting seams and, 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 and things on these costumes to try and make them feel a little bit more real and more structured and, and making them feel like they're had been engineered for, for battle. Um, you know, if you look at design for um, military clothing, a lot of the time those things are have lots and lots of seams on them, reinforced seams to, to really make it sure that the you know if if a soldier's in battle that that um that costume is not gonna is not gonna be the thing that falls apart for for him. Um, and then I'm going in and sort of trying to figure out some some look for the clouds. If if I get a chance to really really finish this off at some point, I I, I might. To do some better lines and better design shapes for clouds. Um, but I, I was getting into the details on, on Cap's head and trying to figure out, like, what's the best way to represent this. Um, ideally, what I'm going to try and do here is create an image that you guys can download and, and, and um, print out and, and color in if, if you'd like. Um, so I don't want to fill in everything because I don't want to take away the, the possibility from you guys coloring it, but I did feel like Cap's helmet is pretty dark, uh, so I might as well just fill in that a little bit so it, it becomes a focal point and, you know, you end up being able to see him a little bit. Um, 
and and because his his turtleneck is a little dark that that as well also adding little hatch marks in different places um you know cap is one of those characters who's almost you know from the minute he he starts fighting he he's a little bit dirty he gets he gets um he gets you know dirt on his face and 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 different scuff marks on his costume and his shield um and and that is a is an important part of his design as well um so I think there's there's a couple ways you can treat this video. I think you can treat it as, you know, if you'd like to try and give a shot of, of um, using it as an instructional video to try and draw your own version of, of Captain America. Uh, but you can also take the, the, the drawing that's been done and, and um, print it out and color it in if, if you'd like. I'm just adding the, the sort of finishing touches, more again, more scuffs and scrapes and adding some, some additional details to the shield. Um, and I think that that's pretty much the final. Um, I hope you've enjoyed, uh, this version of, um, the VizDev Art School. Uh, I hope you guys have a great day.